There is a question. There's a question about, actually, which is pertaining to the topic. A lot of people are struggling with the concept of buying their own house and financing the purchase of their own house in Norway, particularly a lot of Muslims have mentioned that. And they were talking about the prohibition of riba. And they wanted you to explain, Sheikh, that. Um, is, there, I mean, what, is there any permissibility at all in buying a house? Or, you know, if you're here and you can't, maybe you've got nowhere to live. A lot of people, they don't, they don't have welfare state system with social housing here in Norway. Half the salary goes to the rent, more than that. Yeah, it's like London anyway. So they're asking for a bit of advice on that. I mean. Alhamdulillah, salatu was salam, Rasulullah. To deal with uh, issues of purchasing one's own home, what was done in Canada, uh, where I grew up, uh, was that uh, Muslims formed an association, a housing association, where the members of that association all contributed a certain amount monthly into a fund. And they then drew by straws who would get the first house. When the amount of money reached sufficient to get a house, then the person who was first in the list they got the house. But the house remained in the name of the cooperative until everybody received their house. So what it's saying is that uh, this situation forced Muslims to come and to work together. You couldn't, the only way to do it on your own was to go to the bank and get the mortgage. And this was haram. So the alternative is that the Muslim community work together and develop the alternatives. And that is the proper way, as opposed to just saying, well, you know, I cannot afford it, so therefore I'm going to the bank. No. You sacrifice, even if it means half of your salary is going to rent, at the end of the year you don't have a place, but you have to know that if you're paying half of your salary in rent, that every kroner that you pray, pay is blessed by Allah. That's what you have to be certain of. Because you're paying it to avoid going into riba, going into interest. So know that every kroner is blessed by Allah. Whereas if you do the mortgage, know that every kroner you pay is cursed by Allah. So though you may end up with a home, but it is a cursed home. As the Prophet ﷺ had said about the man on the journey who dust in his hair, falls on his knees, raises his hands, prays to Allah. But the Prophet ﷺ said, how is Allah going to answer his prayer? When the food that he is eating is haram. The money that he has earned is haram. The flesh that has grown on his body has grown from haram. How is Allah going to answer his prayers? So that is the bottom line. We should know that. Even though that person was on a journey and we know that's the best time to make dua. Isn't it? He raises his hands. That's one of the correct actions in making dua. But his dua was rejected because his food, his earnings were haram. So my advice, as I said, for the community to come together, create that association. We did it in Canada. You can do it here. But it requires effort, sacrifice, commitment. But it can be done.